This is how Barney Stinson was introduced to audiences on the pilot of How I Met Your Mother. Hey, so you know how I've always had a thing for half Asian girls? Well, now I've got a new favorite, Lebanese girl. Then Barney turned into this. I just slept with my best friend's ex-girlfriend. And I just slept with my ex-boyfriend's really good friend. Best friend. Then he became this. Wow, you have enormous penis syndrome? I've never heard of that. Yeah, that's the problem with EPS, lack of awareness. Return to this. We really do have a ring bear. What? <laughs> Until he finally ended up like this. You are the love of my life. Today we'll be getting into Barney Stinson's multiple character arcs, but before we do that, don't forget to like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic if you haven't done so already. Now, the changes that the character of Barney Stinson endures throughout the decade of television that was How I Met Your Mother are sprawling. Over the years, this character who starts out as a user, manipulator, and quite frankly, just a terrible person in almost every way imaginable. It's not cheating if you're not the one who's married. It's not cheating if her name has two adjacent vowels. And it's not cheating if she's from a different area code. Transforms into a hopeless romantic a husband, and ultimately, a loving and caring father. Sitcoms like to put their characters into boxes, for lack of a better metaphor. In any given sitcom, you have your every person, your ingenue, your nerds, your slackers, your wisecracking goofballs, your mentors. Some characters make the audience burst into applause on entrance, and some characters trigger that extended fawning response when they do something sweet. Sitcoms can almost feel like a game of chess, in the sense that each individual piece on the board operates with its own set of rules. Now, not only is this a way of diversifying a show's content by mixing and matching characters and scenarios to ensure that things don't get too stale too quickly, it's also a way of managing audiences' expectations. See, when we turn on an episode of How I Met Your Mother, there is a degree of predictability that we, as viewers, find comfort in. However, there are moments in which these characters need to grow and change. The character of Barney Stinson is not the best example of how to change a character. In fact, he might be one of the worst examples of how to change a character. The main reason for this is the way his character was set up from the start. From the get-go, Barney Stinson was established as a character who would disrupt social situations out of boredom and manipulate women to get what he wants from them, which was usually a one-night stand. He is a character that was written from the very beginning as having almost no moral compass whatsoever. Granted, this was back in 2005, and comedy was a little different at the time, but Barney Stinson's behavior is still pretty reprehensible. He does manipulate women that he wants to sleep with. He has gone as far as to film his sexual conquests without asking permission to do so. No, 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 baby, don't worry. The flashing green light means it's off. And he has even brought up that he may have engaged in human trafficking at one point in time by selling a woman for a car. At one point, I'm pretty sure I sold a woman. I didn't speak the language, but I shook a guy's hand, he gave me the keys to a Mercedes, and I left her there. The point is, Barney Stinson was originally intended to be one of the worst human beings on the planet, and the writers spent almost five seasons cementing that idea into our minds. All of Barney's terrible behaviors and choices seem to be explained away in a somewhat lazy fashion. The writer's justification as to why Barney can get away with behaving the way he does, aside from the fact that he's played by Neil Patrick Harris, who everyone loves, is usually because he is a good friend, or that he sometimes makes a decision that mirrors acceptable human behavior. While the writers definitely try to make this feel like it's enough for the viewers to move on and accept Barney for who he is, there's something that just doesn't feel quite right about it. This sometimes feels like they're forcing Barney's art to work, and paying almost no attention to whether or not they actually earned the right to do so. Let's take a look at a similar character. This is Dennis Reynolds from It's Always Sunny. The whole purpose of buying the boat in the first place was to get the ladies nice and tipsy topside so we can take them to a nice, comfortable place below deck and, you know, they can't refuse because of the implication. Like Barney Stinson, Dennis Reynolds is an exploitative manipulator driven by his own selfish desires. He lies, cheats, and steals. He has similar philosophies. Where Barney Stinson has his playbook, Dennis has the Dennis system. They are very similar characters, but the difference is, Dennis Reynolds loses. He's constantly trapped in his own personal hell, designed by the consequences of his own actions. Barney Stinson doesn't really ever face any consequences until later on in the show, after the writers have already forced his character through arcs and storylines that they never truly earned. Writing a good sitcom is essentially like someone drawing a caricature of what they think life looks like. The features are exaggerated, but it still resembles the real world. 
Ideally, in the real world, we want the bad guys to be held accountable for their actions. This never really happens with Barney Stinson. He is just sort of terrible until he isn't anymore. In season 5, Barney begins a romantic relationship with Robin. This is his first major pivot as a character on the show but even that is done through a fairly problematic lens. We're never really rooting for Barney to end up with Robin. In fact, at this point in the show, we're actively rooting for Robin to run as far away from him as possibly can. This first fling between these two characters goes on for about half of a season, but ultimately fizzles out. However, the decision to put Robin and Barney into a relationship made it very clear as to what needed to happen with Barney Stinson's character in order for his art to make any sense. This is where the writers introduced the character of Nora. Nora is another one of Barney's victims, but not in the typical womanizing one-night stand type of way. You see, Nora is the first romantic partner that Barney actually cares about who exists outside of the main plot of the show. Robin and Barney had a pre-existing relationship prior to becoming romantically involved, whereas Nora and Barney were building their relationship from the ground up. Where Robin had already known and accepted Barney for having his blind spots, Barney's relationship with Nora serves as a vehicle for Barney to do the work necessary to discover where his blind spots are, and how to become a better person in the process. Now, Barney still lies to Nora, he still manipulates her, and he eventually cheats on her with Robin later. But unlike Barney's previous sexual conquests and failed relationships, his relationship with Nora is one of the first times Barney faces the consequences of his actions. He's forced to recount all of the times he had ever lied to a woman for sex and show the audience that he is aware and remorseful of the skeletons that he's been hiding in his closet. Sure, it took 146 episodes of television to get to this point, but hey, better late than never. After Barney's arc with Nora comes to a close, he very quickly enters a sort of rebound relationship with Quinn, who he very quickly proposes to. These relationships get kind of hurried along in the show's later seasons. Barney's engagement to Quinn only lasts for about three episodes before writers begin pivoting Barney once again back toward his relationship with Robin. The writers then deepen our sympathies toward Barney by delving into this really sad history with his father, played by John Lithgow. This relationship serves as a mirror for Barney to catch a glimpse of where he might be headed. The journey on which the writers decided to take this character effectively humanized a someone who had been largely reprehensible up until this point. Whether or not you think that the writers did enough to redeem Barney is certainly debatable, but up until this point, Barney had been portrayed as little more than a somewhat problematic tertiary character to the show's central plot. By providing him with these character arcs, Barney was able to carry the entire final season of the show on his shoulders as the leading man. It's hard to write a romance around a character like Barney. Characters like this must be put through some type of trial by fire for us as viewers to even begin to entertain the fact that they might be coming around and learning from their mistakes. This sort of comeuppance for Barney allows us as viewers to really finally be on board with his relationship with Robin. We stop seeing Barney as a well-to-do playboy, and we start seeing him as a human being with a heart. This ultimately paves the way for Robin and Barney's marriage, which serves as the throughline for the show's final season, and it wouldn't have been possible given the way Barney was developed in the show's first five seasons. Barney needed accountability to progress in our hearts and minds as an acceptable suitor to another beloved character. After it is revealed that Robin and Barney divorced one another, we are still on board with his redemption to the point of being excited and optimistic over the idea that he will be entering fatherhood with a woman he had a one night stand with. And that's where we leave his character at the crowning moment of his final character arc. Everything I have and everything I am is yours. Barney Stinson's many character arcs are remarkable in the sense that almost all of them were set up to fail from the very first episode. The writers had plenty of misses with the character as well, but there is something to be said about effort. For all intents and purposes, the writers could have just given up on Barney and relegated him to just being a terrible person all the time. But the efforts taken to humanize and educate him result in us feeling good about where we leave this otherwise problematic character at the time of the show's conclusion. It's never enough to just have characters that engage in terrible behavior behavior for no other reason beyond thinking it's funny to be an awful human being. We need to understand where the behavior comes from, and we need to see our characters engage in behaviors that rectify their actions if they are to be redeemed. Inversely, if we don't want these terrible characters to be redeemed, they at least need to lose for us to be on board with showing up to watch them on a weekly basis. Creating accountability and consequences for the characters allows us to understand their humanity beyond what we see on the surface. And once our characters face the accountability and consequence, they can change in a way that makes sense with the context of the story. 
And also in the way that can touch our hearts as a viewer. It can turn something horrible into something tragically hilarious. Or it can turn something monstrous into something that feels genuinely heartwarming. And hey, that's it for today's episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to click on these links here if you want to stick around. Thanks for watching Nerdstalgic.